Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Mountaineers. This is a one to six player area control route building resource management mountain climbing game where you take the role of mountain climbers trying to climb up a mountain utilizing your pitons, your resources, upgrades, and completing your route cards trying to become the best mountaineer. How do you become the best mountaineer and win the game? By having the most climbing points at the end of the game. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components set up and how gameplay works in Mountaineers. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the main game board, your mountain holder board, which is a four-sided mountain board from the Deluxe Edition, double-sided mountain sides, conditions board and stand, condition board marker, competition climbing goals and stand, supply tokens, character cards, route cards, event cards, guide cards, automated climber cards, these are required for your one to two player games. And you can always up the player count by using automated climber cards. And then in each of the player colors, in the regular edition you have four colors. In the deluxe you have five and six player colors. You have your score tracker, your climber, your pitons and your carabiners. The wooden pitons and carabiners are from the collector's edition. your climbing goal markers, your upgrade boards, and finally we have your rule book. And if you got the collector's edition, you also have resource trays. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're gonna be setting this up for a three player game which takes nine steps. Step one, connect and place the main board. You will connect the main board to the mountain holder board using the spinner and place it in the center of the play area. Step two, you are going to create the mountain. You are going to shuffle and or choose mountain sides, place them in the mountain holder board and pull the rubber band on top of the mountain. If it's less than five players, Real or automated, you are going to use the three-sided mountain. And if it's greater than or equal to five players, you will use the four-sided mountain. So since we're setting this up for a three-player game, we're gonna use the three-sided mountain. Step three, you are going to set up your conditions board. You will assemble the conditions board with the stand. And then if it's your first time playing the game, you will use side A of the conditions board. And if you would like a more challenging game, you can use side B. You will then place the conditions marker to the side. Since the condition board would sit too vertical to see from the camera, I will place it to the side at a better angle. Step four, you're going to separate event cards. You're gonna separate the event cards into regular event cards and condition change event cards. The condition change event cards have the exclamation mark in the top right corner of the card. Step five, prepare event card deck. You will shuffle each event card stack, make a pile of nine regular event cards for each player. Add one condition change event card to each stack, making 10 cards per stack. Then shuffle each stack and stack those on top of each other to create one event card deck. The game will end when all event cards have been drawn. Step six, set the starting condition. Draw one condition change event card to start the game. Place the piton on the conditions board. Place the conditions board marker on the conditions board and then turn the remaining event cards back to the box. Step seven, shuffle and deal routes and characters. You're going to shuffle and deal six route cards and two character cards to each player. Then the player must choose four routes and one character. The rest will go back to the box. Players route cards are secret, but character cards are revealed and placed face up in their player area. Step eight, 
Get player components. Each player will select a color and get the corresponding upgrade board, 30 numbered pitons, 10 carabiners, one climber, a score tracker, and then if you're playing with the competition goals, you will get competition goal markers, and you will also get 20 supplies, and if you're a beginner, you'll start with 30 supplies, and then finally, a guide card. And then step nine, you will choose a starting player, which is the player that has climbed a mountain most recently, and place each climber on the bottom row of the mountain. Then you will create a supply pool near the play area. And then lastly, there is an optional step. If you would like to use the global milestones and or the goals, the milestones is the first to complete or second to complete, and the goal is having the most at the end of the game, then you will draw one at random for each and place them on their stand. You can use your markers throughout the game to mark the milestones. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. A game consists of rounds until all event cards are drawn. A round consists of players carrying out a turn in clockwise order. Players want to familiarize themselves with the seven terrain types and nine terrain features that are located on the mountain. There is a guide on the main game board. A turn consists of three steps. Draw an event card, resolve the event card, and perform actions. Now let's take a look at each of those steps in detail. Step one, draw an event card. You will draw the top event card and read the top portion to all players. So let's say it is yellow player's turn. They would only read the top portion of the event card out loud. Players with fewer than 15 markers on the mountain draw one supply. Step two, resolve the event card. If it's a condition change, you would update the conditions board. If it is a regular event card, the condition only applies to the current turn. It's good to keep in mind that if a player has to pay supplies and they don't have any supplies, then they don't pay. Also, keep in mind that if a card forbids climbing in a certain terrain, you can move from that terrain, but not to that type of terrain. So in this case, all players would receive one supply since none have more than 15 markers. And then step three, perform actions. Players are to perform up to four actions during this step. You can perform up to two regular actions, you can perform a special action, and you can perform a character action. You may take these actions in any order. You may also repeat a regular action. There are five types of regular actions. One is rest. You may rest and gain five supplies. The second type of regular action is to move. You would pay one supply to move one space. When you move that space, you would place a piton on the space you moved from, and if you want to place a carabiner on that piton, you would pay one supply. Carabiners count for routes, can be placed on other players' pitons, and make those pitons immune to sabotage. Make sure to check the current event or conditions when you're moving. Every piton is worth a climbing point, and it is suggested to place in sequential order. This will help you track your pitons at the end of the game. When moving over other players, pitons or climbers, you must have enough moves to get to an open location. The third type of regular action is to purchase upgrades. You would pay five supplies to purchase one upgrade from your upgrade board. When you do so, you would use your highest piton to mark the upgrade chosen. The fourth type of regular action is to use an upgrade. You would pay the supplies to use the upgrade. Now let's look at the upgrades. Starting in the upper left corner, you have your repellent. You'd pay three supplies to move two spaces to the forest. Next, your trekking poles. You would pay three supplies to move two spaces to the trail. Snowshoes, you would pay three supplies to move two spaces to snow. Harness, you would pay three supplies to move two spaces to rock. Mountaineering boots, you would pay three supplies to move two spaces to alpine terrain. Ice axe, you would pay three supplies to move two spaces to glacier terrain. Helicopter, you would pay four supplies to fly to any open position in the mountain. Sabotage, 
you would pay four supplies and one climbing point to remove one piton next to your climber and place it with your character card. And then you may climb one space. Light gear, pay four supplies and move two spaces to positions below 4,000 meters elevation. And then finally, oxygen, pay four supplies to move two spaces to positions above 4,000 meters elevation. And then finally, the fifth type of regular action is to purchase climbing routes. You would pay five supplies to draw two routes and keep one of those routes. When doing so, make sure to watch for symbols, and if any are impossible because of the setup, then you would discard those climbing routes and draw another to replace it. Then we have special actions. Take the top portion of the action located in the bottom section of the card. So on that event card, you would pay to use one upgrade and its action without purchasing the upgrade. If you use that special action, you would discard that card and put it in the event card discard pile. And then finally, the character action. You can perform your character specific action or ability. So for yellow's character action, you would pay two supplies to move one space to forest. So let's say it's yellow player's turn. So for the yellow player's turn, they chose to use their character action first, then perform a move action, and then purchase an upgrade. It's good to keep in mind that table talk and trades can take place anytime to barter for everything but route cards. When you trade and barter, you must be on the same side of the mountain. So now that yellow player has finished their turn, it would go to blue and turns and rounds would continue until the final event card is drawn and that player's turn is over. Then we would go to the final scoring, which would take four to five steps. You would place your score tracker at zero and then complete the four to five steps. Step one, count up your completed climbing routes. Step two, you would score one point per piton and climber on the mountain. Step three, you would score the very bottom section of completed event card goals. Step four, you would score the global milestone and goals. And then step five, you would subtract your sabotage points. After all the players have calculated their climbing point totals, the player with the most climbing points is the best mountaineer and wins mountaineers.